to him. What is your prayer for the First Nations people, and what is your passion? You've been around a lot in your community. Just tell me a little bit about what your passion is. Well, the answer is not in tradition. And why? Because Christ is the one that died okay. on the cross for everyone, one of us. Mm -hmm. Either white man, black man, whatever. Mm -hmm. Not one native people say they say there's one God for a native people. There's only one true God, the one that will deliver you, set you free completely, make a brand new man or woman out of you. Mm -hmm. Tradition will never, never change your life. Some of the Aboriginal people believe that tradition will, and and for instance, in the sweat lodges, they believe in the grandfather rocks and all that stuff. Can you just talk a little bit about why? Do you think that grieves God? <laughs> Obviously, I know that. How do I feel that? Grandfathers are dead. Absolutely. They're not alive. Absolutely. Amen. So, I don't know why they talk to dead men. They're dead. That's it. They can't get no answer. But the devil will answer your prayer. You don't cross. You gotta go to Jesus Christ to get your answer to God, because He's the one. He says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me." Very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's no creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, for our young people, okay, a lot of our young people are embracing the cultural ways so that they can get back to their roots. Um, we know that the Christian faith is the only way, right, through Christ. But how do you? How would you say? How can we reach our young people to show them that Christ is the only way? Do you know what I mean? Well. Our life, it's our life. They have to recognize that we are changed. We're not that same old man or old lady that used to be. All the time. My life was changed when I was uh, in the world, like Catholic, you know. And I knew all my man's answers with the priest, but that never changed me. I was still alcoholic. I drank until I came to Christ. And everything left me, the cursing and swearing and, and everything left me. And Jesus came into my life. But most of all, at that time when Christ came into my life, I lost my mind because of alcohol. My mind was gone because I had spinal meningitis. Eight, seven, eight months, I was, didn't have nothing at all. But they took me to the church meeting, prayer meeting. And I don't know what they preach on, I don't know nothing. But I got up and walked to the front, not knowing what they preached. But you know, they prayed with me, Jesus lay hands on me, but I went home in the same condition. But one morning, about a week later on, oh God, one morning I was in my right mind. My, and everything changed. Hallelujah. Everything. Cursing and swearing and coming to adultery and all these things were gone. Only Jesus can change your life. You know, there's no, no tradition or anybody else. I don't care how many times you go to that sweat lodge, it will never change you. That's right. That's right. Never deliver you right. you free. That's right. You know, you shared you shared a story earlier about that drum. You said something about the drum and the, the um, tell us about that story again that you shared. About the woman who went to the church and um, was it, no, it was your grandfather. Was it your father? In 1962, was it your father? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us the history of your father and what was it? What was it like back in those days? Till it is now. It seems like everybody wants to embrace all these ways. Tell us a little bit about the, the historical. 1962 was the first time they brought the Pablo into our reserve. We come the reserve, Manitoulin Island. The first time they. They, they brought it. My brother Jerome asked my dad to go to, to the powwow. So he went, but he only stayed there 15 minutes. He walked out to the next morning. He didn't say nothing to my, my dad, but the next morning he went over and asked my dad, Dad, you want to go again? And he said, no, no, no. He said, he's kind of, a, kind of angry, you know. And he said, no, we have never, Never, never done this. We never done that. Now they are here. They will deceive a lot of people. If I tell you now, he says, 
he will not understand, but you're going to see it. It will not change. This Paul was going to see a lot of people. And what did your your grandfather was a man of the word? Yeah. So he knew exactly. Yeah. And you know what? His prophecy is so right on. So right on. Um, what do you have to say in regards to, you've been with your husband for a long time, what have you seen in regards to um, the areas that in different community, in, in your community, um, that you sense that's happening that's really grieving God, that you'd like to see change? Well, there's a lot of things that are happening, especially with the children, which are taken away from Yes, and uh, they, uh, they restrict on how they do discipline the children. You know, like the, the Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what's happening. And these kids are in a lot of trouble. They spoil drugs. And like our grandchildren, they, they're taking... Well, they're on that whatever drug to, keep, to take them off of it. Mm. But really, they don't, all they have to do is have to go to God and heal them. Yeah. But it's hard to tell them this. Yeah. It's like a seal. They got a mind of their own. Yeah. You don't want to listen. We're in a time of rebellion. Yeah. 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 Bernie, are you going to we're here in Tim Hortons, and I'm interviewing Bernie. Bernie, but they call him Pastor Buzzy Bernie, which is like bourgeois? Okay, tell us a little bit, of, where are you from, Bernie? Massey. Massey, okay. And uh, I've had the honors of coming to your community, and it's such a blessing to be a part of your, your community and your church. Tell us a little bit about, we have some time left, a little bit about what's on your heart in respect to what you're seeing right now. Um, and just a whole, just a whole historical moment with go what's going on with First Nations and how there's just this, seems to be this hunger for culture opposed to Christ, or else they're trying to mix the two. What would you say is really on your heart regarding that, and what, what's God speaking to you about? Well, I believe they're going the wrong way because uh, it seems to me uh, they brought that in through the Catholic Church mm. and, uh, and quite a few of my family are involved with it like uh, they're, they're more like uh, deacons in the Catholic Church and mm -hmm. they, they present that to the people mm -hmm. and uh, in the meantime I'm trying to uh, go the other way I'm trying to do what Jesus did yes. <coughs> heal the sick cast out spirits right. and uh, res restore people <laughs> like uh, a couple of weeks ago I was in uh, Thunder Bay and I prayed for young people I prayed for old people seven years old and her, her cousin was eight years old and they were all molested right up to the grandma and uh, during the service we asked the people to close their eyes and we uh, we asked the question how many would lift up their hands and admit they've been molested it was about 12 women that lift up their hands and Right, right from the little girl, the seven-year-old girl, eight years old, and the grandma to that family were molested. And six people came up for, uh, for prayer and talk about setting free people. That was beautiful. That's awesome. And uh, there were some young people that were out in the back, you know, they just come and see and what's going on. And uh, they came the last night I was there, and they gave their heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that was a. It was worded that I went there. Yes. Just to see the 
the family set free from molestation or whatever they got yes. uh, abuse, mm -hmm. sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started right from the young girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't know when she got molested, but. And, and uh, to see that young face turn from a down, down, down view, you know, of like like a low, yeah. low esteem, yes. Yes. to a bright smile. That was a word at all that would be up there. That's awesome. Under That's me. awesome. And uh, it's not only happening there, but I believe it's happening everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Even more so in a big city like Toronto, where we are now. Yeah. And uh, it's happening there. And uh, the only way I see is to get the comforter yes. to work. The comfort of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Absolutely. Spirit. That's the only one that can change a person. The Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because that's the only person that changed me. That's right. And. Uh, I too lived half of my life in, in sin and I didn't know Jesus, mm -hmm. but I was introduced mm -hmm. to the Lord mm -hmm. and uh, when, when, when he got a hold of me, he really got a hold of me. <laughs> <laughs> he did and you yeah. never turned back. <laughs> yes, and uh, I would like to see more people being filled with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. because I believe that's the big change in their heart. When you see a person begin to speak in tongues, there's a change right there, right at the right at the second. There's a big change in a life when that Holy Spirit touches the heart and the mind. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's the answer that's to our native people. It is. And uh, I wouldn't recommend no one else except the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. Because uh, we have to go through mm -hmm. Jesus. He's my lawyer. Amen. To get to the Father. Because if I do something wrong, I gotta go to Jesus, ask him for forgiveness, then Jesus goes to the Father That's right. Come and, on. and ask him, will you answer that prayer for so and so? Mm -hmm. That's how it works. That's right. Jesus is my lawyer. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is the one that works That's right. through these hands. That's right. And my big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, I believe, and many have prophesied over my own life too, that revival is going to come to our First Nations people. Um, but my, my question to all of, to all of you, and I, I already believe this, is that in order for revival to come, we need the Holy Ghost, like we have shared. Um, there's going to be persecution that's going to happen. It's already happening. But there needs to be a real laying down in repentance. Um, what would you say about that, Isidore? Revival starts with us. Starts with us, exactly. And what, what, when you say it starts with us, what do we, what does us have to do? What does us have to do in individually, like, in order to see revival take place? When you say revival starts with us, what do you mean? Well, it's going to take place. The glory of God is going to come. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a whole world. Mm -hmm. God is going to move. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not man mm -hmm. or religion mm -hmm. or the name of the church. Mm -hmm. It's the power of God. Come on. Amen. 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 You know, when I'm 